This is a quickie introduction to Unreal Engine. Uh, first thing that you're going to need to do is get yourself an Epic Games account so that you can um, download and launch the latest version. At the moment, we're on 5.3.2. Other things to keep an eye on are marketplace and samples where you can get some free or cheap um, assets that you could download and use in your project. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and launch. OK, once you've done that, um, this will bring you into a window where you can either opt to um, open up a recent project or maybe start up a new games project or there are some other settings, but we're going to concentrate on the game setting today. Um, you could choose to start a first or a third person shooter, but we're actually just going to start off with a blank uh, project to start with. Um, also, the project details that we're going to go for the default settings, which are blueprint, uh, target platform, desktop, um, quality preset, medium, and I'm leaving the starter content and the ray tracing off. Uh, we're going to um, I'm going to show you how to bring in the starter content separately anyway, along with any other content that you might want to bring in and the ray tracing would just slow everything down. The most important thing is going to be noting where you've saved your project so that you can find it again um, or navigate to a folder that you want to save your project in. Um, I'm just and also give your project a name. So we give this um, demo and uh, hit create. So your opening window should look something like this. So we've got a uh, main sort of um, um, vis um, window to visualize the platform. We've also got um, to the right, we've got an outliner panel and below that a details panel. And at the bottom, we've got a contents drawer. So if I just sort of like double click on that contents drawer, it, it expands it so that you can see everything. This is where you keep all your project folders. Um, at the moment, you'll notice that this is sort of obscuring the details panel, which is why I tend to um, have a separate browser for that. So if we go to window content browser, you can see that's nicely toggled in there. There might be a better way of doing it, but um, this works for me. So um, yes, I've got a content browser and a content drawer. I'm not using the content drawer. I'm just using they effectively the same thing. It's just literally so that I can get it more nicely toggled. Um, OK, so um, the, the first thing that we need to do is maybe um, make this a bit smaller and try and zoom into um, our landscape here that's come as a default. Um, for some reason, my screen is really slowly build, building, so um, I might just speed this up a bit. Right, if you um, if you select a part, here we go, this is part of the landscape. If you select part of the, um, of, of, you know, what you've been building, if you press the F key, that enables you to see. There we go. Um, see the element. Um, it will. It will just. It will just bring it into view. So, just pressing the F key, I'm able to sort of quickly get down to ground level. Okay. And then, if you want to deselect um, anything that you've selected, you need to press the Escape key on your um, keyboard there. All right, so so now I can we've got all these landscape elements. I'm just going to collapse down that fold with all the landscape bits in because it's taking up all this room in the outliner. Um, and then let's bring up the content browser. Um, OK, so we need to drag some elements onto this stage. Um, anything that you drag onto the stage is going to be called an actor, whether it's a light camera, um, maybe volumetric uh, fog or some, um, you know, some some geometry or meshes. You, you drag any of those things onto your stage and these are all actors. So you, there's a few different ways you can do that. You can either elect to sort of like grab some bits and drag them straight onto the stage 
from this little drop down menu coming off this little cube with the plus sign or um, I'm going to show you the add actors panel which can be found under the window menu um, mainly because there's a big difference between shapes and geometry so shapes are um, ready-made meshes that can be dragged onto the scene whereas geometry um, are more editable because they are actually um, BSPs, which is binary space partition, uh, partitioning um, elements, which means that you can Boolean them together in order to do really quick rough blocking out. So if I just grab from a, the geometry um, drop down or the geometry section um, a box, you just drag that onto the stage here. Maybe zoom in a little bit. Again. OK, we've got the box there. Um, so you've got some different gizmos on the top right hand corner here. There's a selection to arrow. There's a move tool, which is all looking recognisable. Um, there's also um, a rotation tool and a scaling tool. So if I just go back to the uh, moving tool, there's also some snapping tools here. So you can um, have the snapping on or off. So putting the snapping on this at the moment is going to be moving um, 10 um, um, to the value of 10 on that grid. So if I do you know, you can see hopefully it's sort of moving 10 spaces each time. If I move that up to 100, it's going to move in jumps there. And then um, put that back down to 10 again and it's going to move in small increments or you can put the snapping off and just move it more freely where it's not going it's going to be moving at any sort of manually with your hand um, the same applies for the rotation tools at the moment this is rotating um, 10 degrees if we make it rotate at 30 then you can rotate it around in um, 30 degree increments or you can turn that off and rotate that freely. And the same for scaling. So, oops. We can do some free form sc scaling. Oops. Right, so if I put that on uh, 50%, then that should be jumping up 50% each time. So do one jump, that should be twice the size. OK, so you can play with these snapping tools or you know changing these increments right so for the next bit just going to play with the boolean part of this so for this i'm going to make this um shape narrower maybe even a little bit more than that um and then bring another box onto the stage that we're going to take down in size. And line that up so that it is sort of going to the top of the other box. That's all looking nicely centered actually. Um, it would never happen if you meant it. I <laughs> needed it to. Um, right, I'm just going to take that down a bit more. I think it's because it's <laughs> got this on. 
snapping. That will do. Great. Okay, the other thing that we need to do is make that more of a cigar shape so that here we go, it's going to intercept the blocks. Um, right, the next thing, I mean, at the moment, that's looking nicely centered, but if I move that so that I move that so that it's not centered. Um, what could be quite useful is having a look at these other um, ways that we can view the screen. So at the moment we're viewing everything lit, we could elect to see what it looks like unlit, or maybe see the wireframe um, version, or um, we could choose to see a different view, a different angle. So we've got front right i'm just going to put the landscape off and press the f key to find out where it is and there it is it's not letting me view oh mm -hmm. OK, so if I select the two brushes. In the um, outline, you can see that that's not select, that's not centered. So let's just grab the top brush, which will be brush two and just drag it down a little bit. And this is where this other view might come in useful. So now that is centered so that can go back to perspective and we can go back to lit view. Great, I've, I've turned the landscape eye off, so I'm putting it back on again. So, right, with the second brush selected, the second box selected, which is this one here, right, you have to be quite careful because um, you'll notice that you can select different planes of these boxes because it's a brush. So if we grab the whole box from the um, outliner, then it means that we can scroll down in the details panel down to the bottom where it says advanced, um, open up the drop down menu and that, that's not that one yet. <laughs> we can go further up and here we go. Brush type additive. We want to turn that to subtractive and you know, it's punched a hole out of the, third, the other the other box. So um, now we can turn this into an editable mesh. Or we can turn it into a mesh and then take it somewhere else where we're going to edit it. So I'm going to take the and um, grab the first box, then grab the second box. They're both um grab them both in the outliner. Now scroll down to the advanced tools and you can just open up this collapsible menu here and select create static mesh. Um so we're going to create a static mesh there. We're going to Call it um, box. Oops. Box. Um, there we go. Okay, so there's the static mesh. Right, now we can um, right. Well, now we need to move this into another package. So we're going to put it into Maya. So if I do a right click on here, I can do an asset action and export it as. And I'm going to save it where I'm going to export it to. Um, I'm going to save it into the general folder. That I've got for my Unreal Engine projects um, as a back box panel. FBX, lovely, save that there. Right, this is B normally where you would save things like the animation um, and the meshes, but because this is really a box standard, really basic shape, we just um, go ahead and export that FBX. Now, if I go into Maya, okay, right, let's do file, import. got here 
box panel FBX, import that. Um, right, this is the right view. So let's go to the right view. And then we're going to find the vertices. Just move this around so that we've done something to it. Great, put it back to perspective. Lovely. Put that back to object mode and it's selected so we can go file. Export selected. Um, and I saved it here, yeah. And then save it over the top of the original. Yes. Yeah, replace it, lovely. So now I should be able to see. Um, there we go, box panel FBX. So um, if I could remember demo. Um, if I open up the content for this, I should be able to drop my FBX in there. And then, whoops, wrong one. Import that into Oh, and there it is. It's automatically updated there because it's um, it's replaced the um, its original file, which had a which had a smaller opening. Great. So um, you could go about um, you know blocking out a scene, and I've got an, another example here where I've started doing this. In fact, what I've done here is I've got a layer which I've called asset building, so that it's kind of like my workshop. So if I just sort of zoom out here. Right, finally, uh, I was just going to show you about bringing in some um, assets that are ready to to use. So with the um, in the content browser with content selected, you can go to the little here add. Um, content and we're going to add the content pack. Um, so you could also add your first or third person shooters here, but we're going to just add the content pack. So add to project. And then just cancel, get rid of that. And you can see here that um, this starter content has brought in all sorts of bits and pieces uh, which can be used. So we've got props here. Um, oh. So why is that so playing me up? Maybe it's just in the wrong place. And it is. Why is this not snapping too good? Snip to surface. Yeah. Okay, let's bring some more. There's a door. There's another one. Opening that one with my And all sorts of bits and pieces there. Um, oh, there's a chair. Right, finally, two other critical pieces of info that I didn't um, um, share earlier is to save regularly, and I haven't been doing it at all. So you've got different options where you can do this. You can either go file, um, save current layer, 
or level or you can do uh, file save all um, if you click on this little icon up here um, then it's going to just save the current level so it's not a save all this little floppy disk icon otherwise you can go down to the content browser and do save all there so i should do that now so it's going to say content save selected yeah um start a level yep yeah, that's um great i think we're going to do save it as yeah um start and do and then it's showing up here at the top it's called start um Right, the other thing is that you might have assets that you've made elsewhere that you then want to bring into this content browser down here um, so that you can drag it out onto your stage. Um, so let's do that. So um, I've got the teapot ready. If I just go into Finder, there's the teapot. There's the um, starter content. There we go, start map. Let's just drag the teapot, drop it into content. And then we'll come back to content. This should be able to, this one here, add import to gain. Teapot, there it is. Um, oh, I should have saved it into content, didn't save it in the right place. Thanks for that. Let's have a quick look. Um, yeah, teapot needs to go into content. Going. There's something done. There it is. Okay, so the teapot's now in content. Import it. And import all um, because that would bring any textures that were on it. So now we can drag the teapot there to the stage. Oops, I didn't want that. Let's go back to there. It is there's a teapot, and we can just change the scale of that. Let's make it big. Oops, wrong way. This might just sort of swivel that around a little bit. It's probably increments too big. Right, there we go. Um, and the other thing, because we've got the starter content, we've now got all sorts of materials at our disposal. So if I just click on this one, here we go. Let's just check the teapot out in the um, display panel here at the bottom and you can see here we've got the teapot it's static mesh and here underneath we've got materials so we can literally just drag a material let's drag moss and drop it onto the teapot and there it goes there's a mossy teapot so and this is really good news because we've got quite a lot of materials here that have come with the um, starter content or as shown to you before you can always go up to Quicksilver Bridge and select um, sort of three assets that way. Okay so I hope you've got enough there to be getting on with.